Studying mathematics at degree level can be quite a difficult task, especially since you constantly have the pressure of the world-renowned antique question, when will I ever use this in real life, hanging on your back. Whether you received an offer to study maths at university beginning next fall and don't know the answer to this question yourself, or you're sure that mathematics is the right path for you, or you have no intention of studying maths at degree level but still want to have a glimpse into the world of a math student, I would simply say let's start with the basics. How should you prepare for a degree in mathematics? <laughs> Hello everybody and thank you so so much for being here today. My name is Joanna and I am a first year student doing maths at the University of Oxford at St. Anne's College. Alright, so here's the thing. There are loads and loads of simple little things that you can do in the summer before starting university in order to help smoothen the transition from high school or A-level material that can make all the new concepts, ideas and the teaching style at university seem less frightening. When I went to Oxford back in September 2020, I had a lot of free time on my hands for the first two weeks since I needed to quarantine myself, but I had absolutely no idea what to do to prepare myself for the upcoming year. I don't want you guys to be in the same boat as I was, so without further ado, let's get straight into the video. <laughs> A huge part of your first term or even your whole first year at university is going to revolve around you learning how to write a mathematical proof. You'll even have classes based off on writing rigorous proofs. Such a class is the analysis course, and proofs in analysis are the one thing that scares students the most. However, rest assured knowing that it is definitely not as bad as it seems. I would say that it is just a matter of fancy notation and some logical thinking thrown into the mix. Okay, but how do we write such a rigorous proofs? Glad you asked. Let's say that you want to give a proof to the following statement found in some random textbook. Prove that if x is an odd integer, then x squared is an odd integer. Quite simple, right? So right off the bat, what you would want to do is start your proof by writing claim followed by a colon and then give the statement of what you are trying to prove. So it would be something like claim colon if x is an odd integer then x squared is an odd integer. Let your reader know that you'll begin giving a proof to your statement by simply writing proof on your paper. So it would just be proof followed by a colon, exactly like you wrote the claim part. Then always begin your proof with a statement of your assumptions. So in our case it would be something like let x be an odd integer. The word let is chefkiss. What you also want to do is use the we in your proof instead of I. So you always say something like we assume that instead of I assume that or I want to prove that. You would just simply say we want to prove that. All you have to do next is simply know how to use concise mathematical language. There are some key terms and notations here that you can and should always use in your proofs. Here's a list of all the most common things that you want to use in your proofs and there are symbols and notations that I use in every single one of my proofs. This symbol here, for example, means there exists. You can use it to say something like, I don't know, there exists x such that x plus 2 equals 7. This one right here means for all. For example, you can use it to say, for all x, 0 plus x equals x. You can neatly combine these two in a line of proof. For example, you could say something like, for all x, there exists y, such that x plus y equals 0. This error right here means implies. So you'll want to use this notation when you want to say that some statement implies another statement. For example, you could use it to say that x plus 2 equals 3 implies x is 1. You can also use a reverse arrow like this to say that the thing on the right hand side implies the thing on the left hand side. This double arrow thing here reads if and only if, which is often abbreviated in writing to if, so it would be just the word if with a double f, which essentially means is equivalent. For example, you could say x plus 2 is even if and only if x is even. This simple square right here is used at the end of a mathematical proof simply to let the reader know that they've reached the end of your proof. 
I think that those were essentially the main things that you need to keep in mind for writing a mathematical proof. You'll get loads and lots of practice doing this during your first few weeks at uni, so please don't worry if it all seems a bit overwhelming right now. Alright, so there are a bunch of websites, resources and apps that will make your life easier at university, so here are just a few that helped me throughout my first year. The number one thing is Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha is essentially a fancy calculator. The website version offers basic features, but the app version of this one on iOS or Android is where it truly shines. It's only $3.99 and it offers so much value for this price. I use it in calculus classes to compute integrals, derivatives or even solve differential equations. What's truly amazing about this app is that it offers step-by-step -step solutions to your queries, which are extremely detailed and can help you loads when you are confused about a certain method or technique. Desmos is a free website that you can access in order to plot functions and see their behavior. It's got a very nice and easy to use, very friendly interface. And it always comes in handy when you want to check the shape of your function. GeoGebra is at first glance the same thing as Desmos, but it offers a very wide range of features. It is especially useful in geometry, and I have used it a lot for 3D graphics, and it made things a lot easier for me when I had to view certain shapes in three dimensions. Oh, and it's free as well. Then we've got this brilliant website called Math Stack Exchange. This web forum is heaven sent. If you've got a certain math problem that you couldn't solve, chances are there is most likely a similar question previously asked by someone else on this website. You can learn a lot by simply checking other people's answers and hints, and you can always ask your own questions and get hints and ideas on how to approach it. This other website that I use quite a lot is called Art of Problem Solving. Art of Problem Solving is essentially the same thing as Mastic Exchange, but it is mostly used for more challenging problems. Again, if you want to go for some Olympiad level problems or get your own questions answered quite fast if you ask me, Art of Problem Solving is the right place to go. Heading into your first year at uni, you are expected to know on a basic level how to integrate or differentiate a function. At uni, you'll get some more complicated problems, where differentiating or integrating a function is going to be just a very simple, small step in your proof, so you want to make sure that you are very, very familiar with those. Just make sure you revise how to differentiate and integrate simple elementary functions like x to the n or e to the x, just revise the chain rule for a little while, go over the product rule and the quotient rule for differentiation, and make sure to cover integration by parts and integration by substitution, in order to just ace everything that there is to know before you need on integration. That's where Wolfram Alpha comes in handy. Whenever you want to check if you've differentiated or integrated something correctly, plug it into Wolfram Alpha and you'll be good to go. What you also might want to do before starting university is just visit your university website and get familiar with the teaching style at your uni. That is, see if you're expected to have big lectures like the ones in huge auditoriums with 100 plus students, supervisions or tutorials which are focused on one-on-one -on -one teaching, usually it's a tutor and two to three students, and classes. These are just like tutorials but with 10 to 15 people. For example, at Oxford we have 10 lectures per week, these were normally supposed to be in an auditorium at the Mathematical Institute, but we had them pre-recorded this year. Then we had 3, 4 or 5 tutorials and classes per week. Normally we would have tutorials in one week and then classes the next week and so on. If you are going to study at Oxford or just simply want to learn more about the teaching style here, you can check out this PDF called How do undergraduates do mathematics that I will also link in the description below. Practice problems are always one of the best ways to prepare for a new academic year. 
To be honest, any math problems that you like to solve and have an interest in will do the job. But if you want some more standard problems, you can go to Oxford's website and find a bunch of practice problems for every topic that you'll cover in your first year. These problems are definitely not just for Oxford students. You can go over them regardless of your university, because the syllabus is roughly the same everywhere in your first year. Maybe the names of the courses are changed or something, but the prerequisites are the same everywhere. Wear. I will also link those in the description below if you want to have a look. <music> Lastly, but definitely most importantly, make sure you enjoy your holiday, as cliche as it may sound. It's your free time, you've deserved it by working so so hard during this past academic year, and you are free to do anything you want, anything that you are passionate about. Make sure you find time for yourself and your friends and family, because you'll have loads and loads of occasions to think about maths during your first year. You are definitely not required to start anything now. With that being said, I think we've covered all the things related to your preparation for a maths degree, so thanks a lot for sticking out until the end. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this if you want to follow my journey. Comment down below any questions that you might have or any video suggestions. I'll make sure to get to you as soon as possible. Follow me on Instagram if you want for some more content. And yeah, good luck with your studies. Enjoy your time at university. Enjoy your mathematical journey. And I will see you hopefully in my next video. So goodbye. I'm sick of daydreaming. I just want the feeling of you in my bed. I'm down at this waste time.